It's the single greatest force in history. The record of history is absolutely crystal clear. There is no alternative way of improving the lot of the ordinary people. Capitalism is failing. Like every system, it has periods when it grows and is kind of dynamic. And then periods when it dies. Capitalism is being brought into the conversation. Relatively recently, the Occupy movement, in response to conditions resulting from the 2008 financial crash, put focus on what are seen as failures of capitalism. Self-proclaimed socialists from Bernie Sanders in America to Jeremy Corbyn in the UK and Jean-Luc Mélenchon in France have surged in popularity. At the same time, defenders of capitalism, of free market varieties, and moderate varieties are stronger than ever. But to fully understand and engage in this ongoing debate, we must first understand capitalism. A good start on that is defining it. To define capitalism, we should first look at its origins. Let's start at the tail end, the weakening, of feudalism. In short, feudalism was an economic and political system where areas in a country were divided among a nobility. Focusing only on the economic components of feudalism, as that's what we're interested in now, members of this nobility also owned land on which agriculture took place and peasants who farmed on that land had to pay taxes to the owners for the right to use that land. Though a market did exist in cities and centers of trade, most production took place on nobles' estates, which were, for the most part, self-reliant and had little need to participate in a market. Feudalism's downfall began with the massive population change caused by the Black Death. With the highest estimates of its death toll reaching 200 million people across Eurasia and 60% of the population of Europe, the labor force shrunk dramatically. Landowners were forced to pay wages that were high for the time, and compete for workers to continue producing goods and making profit. The next part of the story was mercantilism, where nations molded trade by creating enterprises, monopolizing markets, and generally intervening in the economy to maximize wealth for themselves. Trade companies that branched across the world gained money and influence. This solidified the importance of global trade networks and the market economy. However, most production was still done by local, independent artisans and tradesmen. There was still one final step to reaching modern capitalism, industrialization. Seeing the new steam engine and machinery that made productivity skyrocket, wealthy individuals created factories to capitalize on the opportunity. A wave of new manufacturing jobs was the result, and due to the far cheaper prices of factory-made products, independent producers were driven almost completely out. Those products, made by workers in exchange for wages in factories functioning as private property, were traded on the expansive global market for profit. This was the beginning of capitalism as we know it today. Let me now explain those three components of capitalism. First, private property. The detail to highlight here is that capital must be owned privately. Well. What is capital, and what is private ownership? Capital is the assets or wealth someone uses to create more assets or more wealth, not including raw goods. For example, factories and offices, as well as the machinery and computers in those factories and offices, would be capital, because they're used to create products that are then sold to create wealth for the owners. However, materials like coal or paper would not be, as they're used up in the creation of the products and act as raw materials. Next, private ownership means non-state ownership, where capital is owned by individuals who pay workers to work using that capital. In most cases, the product of their work also becomes the property of the owner of the capital and is then sold to turn a profit. Second, a market economy prioritizing profit. A market consists of numerous voluntary exchanges between sellers and buyers. Products are bought in return for their market-determined value in money. Key characteristics of this kind of market are price fluctuations and adjustment of the behaviors of sellers and buyers due to market forces such as supply and demand. The profit portion of this means that sellers try to adjust prices and production in order to make the most profit out of the exchanges they make. Third, and finally, wage labor. Wage labor is the exchange not of money for products, but money for labor. The employer then owns the product of the labor and sells it for profit. This is typically in the context of a full-time job, where workers have one or a few main employers for an extended period of time, rather than shifting employers every or nearly every job. 
That is why the artisans and other independent producers from pre-capitalistic markets did not apply for this. So, in summary, capitalism is an economic system where wage laborers work using or on privately owned capital, and the products of their labor are sold by the owners in a profit-prioritizing market economy. Moving on from capitalism for now, I'll be going through many more political ideologies, defining and describing them. Broader definition videos for groups of ideologies like capitalism are meant to frame the more specific ideologies that fit into them. To facilitate and visualize all that, I'll be using a two-axis political spectrum as a kind of roadmap. I am aware of the deficiencies of trying to put politics or economics on a sliding scale at all, but bear with me, I think it'll be helpful. So where should capitalism, that is, capitalist ideologies, go? Well, capitalist ideologies have traditionally been on the economic right, but what should the economic right, or economic left, be? Usually, they aren't too clearly defined. They're said to represent economic freedom versus less economic freedom, or individualism versus collectivism, terms thrown around with no clear meaning. So for the purposes of the series, the economic right will be pure free market capitalism, that is, capitalism with no societally imposed restrictions or limitations of any kind. Economic leftism will simply be measured by how much an ideology deviates from that. This red line will divide the political spectrum into left and right, socialist and capitalist. It does look slightly strange at the bottom there, but I'll explain why that's so in a later video. Thanks, and come back next time for the next entry, Liberalism.